Hello, everybody. Congratulations are in order because Donald Trump has won the 2024 presidential elections. At this moment, not all the ballots have been counted, but if you look at the balance, it's pretty much a done deal. So the question is, will this new administration be good for nuclear or not? And for this, we have prepared three scenarios that we're going to dive into. So what is going on? Um, if we go to the map, what you can see over here, uh, this is on political. Um, basically, Pennsylvania went to Trump. Wisconsin is probably going to Trump. Michigan is probably going to Trump. Nevada, Arizona, and Alaska as well. And if we count all these states up together, that we get up to 300 and 12 electoral votes so this is a resounding victory for donald trump personally i was in favor of kamala harris but i think that you know losers should show grace uh, so we are going to congratulate everyone who has voted for donald trump but i do have some questions because you know uh, from a from a, from an from an outsider viewpoint i'm, I'm offering an outsider viewpoint uh, the United States is is really an important player in the world, and and a lot of alliances depend on uh, on you know the participation and the leadership of the United States. So right now we we are getting a lot of uncertainty with this new vote. The question is, you know, what 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 is this going to mean for international law and stability? Uh, you know, are, are, are Putin and and Xi Jinping going to be restrained or not? Uh, what will happen to NATO? Is the United States going to pull out unilaterally? Uh, does it? Does this mean that Europe uh, basically has to take on its 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 security role uh, without the help of the United States? Uh, what will happen to Ukraine uh, if NATO that loses to the United States? What will happen to the Baltics? I mean, these are all serious and fundamental questions that we need to consider, and 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 people mustn't forget that listen even though europe is pretty strong economically and financially it has only been able to grow to the position where it is today because it had the backing of the united states i am not going to you know beat around the bush that's just the way things are so what does the future for nuclear look like i made three scenarios scenario one Full support for existing nuclear and new nuclear builds. Scenario two, we get nuclear deregulation and licensing simplification. And scenario three, we get a market-driven approach to nuclear development. I also prepared a map for us to watch. So what you can see here, all these placeholders, uh, the blue ones, those are existing nuclear power plants. The, re the red ones, those were the nuclear power plants that were closed during Trump's administration and during Biden's administration. We have to note that the first Trump, uh, the first Trump administration wasn't really that good for nuclear. In fact, nuclear was languishing. And the United States, United States lost five gigawatts of nuclear power. And this was due to basically uh, financial problems. The, 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 the Trump administration didn't see the need for, you know, keeping nuclear power plants operational. Uh, if a nuclear power plant could be replaced by a gas plant, for instance, that would be no problem. The purple placeholders, those are the the placeholders where there are colas or colts. Now, if you go to the NRC website, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, uh, what you can see is all over here is the, these are all uh, license applications that were either issued, withdrawn, or denied, right? And 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 there's there's a lot of uh, issued licenses, construction licenses for EP one thousands. There's also a couple of construction licenses for ESBWR, large boiling water reactors. So if the new administration is going to, you know, want to expedite the construction of new nuclear capacity, then this is the place to begin. But we don't know whether that is going to be their intent or not. In any of these three scenarios, the following will happen. More gas plants will be built. It's quite simple. It's it, it's because electrical demand is going up dramatically in some states, like Georgia, for instance. 
Coal plants will probably not be replaced by nuclear. Maybe Terra Power gets to do that, but that's going to be an outlier. I don't think that this is going to be, you know, a widespread activity in the United States. Gas exploitation and exports will increase. Oil exploitation and exports will increase. Renewable policies will probably be scrapped. And states with democratic leadership will continue the renewable built out, but it will become harder to do overall. So the first scenario that I think might happen, full support for new nuclear builds and existing nuclear power. We get a federal funding boost, significant subsidies and grants allocated to develop and deploy nuclear reactors nationwide, starting with the existing coals, building those AP-1000s, looking proactively for places where other AP-1000s may get built. Public, then we get a public promotion campaign and they're going to frame nuclear as the basically as the pillar of American energy independence but I think that it is going to be fracked gas that 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 that's really going to be the pinnacle the high watermark for for Donald Trump's administration they are going to they are they are going to extract more gas and more oil than we ever seen before and that's going to be the thing that they want to score on then we get streamlined permitting, uh, permitting so reduced red tape for new nuclear builds. Federal agency coordinate with uh, coordinate fast for approvals. This this might be one of those saving graces of putting uh, Elon Musk in 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 a place where he can you know have influence on these kinds of things. Uh, if there is a benefit to be seen there, I think that it will be in streamlined permitting. Then in the first scenario, we are going to get federal backed investment. So in order to get these AP-1000 constructions going, the U.S. will establish a national investment fund to attract private capital into nuclear energy projects. And we are going to see that, you know, uh, it's not just going to be big tech. It's, uh, it's also going to be billionaires that are going to try and get a piece of the pie. This is going to be uh, a, a, a cash grab opportunity Maybe it will be good for nuclear, but, you know, I, I, at this moment, I, I'm a little bit trepidatious about what is going on. And then what you see is that, yes, the United States will uh, maintain certain international partnerships. They are going to keep exporting reactor technologies to, you know, to, to Poland, to the Netherlands and uh, all these countries that want to buy AP-1000s or, or, or AP-300s. And, and, and this is basically to establish energy dominance. Scenario two, nuclear deregulation and licensing simplification. So we get reduced licensing timelines. You know, this, the, the NRC licensing is going to be streamlined. The approval process is going to re be reduced by... Uh, you know, I'm pulling this, this out of thin air by 50% in order to accelerate reactor deployment. They're going to get lower regulatory hurdles. You know, the NRC is not going to ask for 50 million pages, but they're going to ask for 10 million pages. Um, we're going to see flexibility for newer designs, you know, they, they, like, like Oklo, like Kairos, like Terrapar. Uh, terrestrial energy, you name it, uh, they 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 can more easily construct their their their, uh, their their demonstration plants in order to show that these in, indeed can help establish energy dominance, help establish a a new hegemony for the United States where they can basically export nuclear technologies and and, and make sure that all these countries are basically tied into uh, the, the the US economic engine that 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 that's basically what i think that is going to happen if they follow this path you will see more state empowerment uh they 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 will gain more authority over nuclear regulations and they 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 are going to have more uh leeway in order to make you know, to 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 point to to say okay that's a place where you can build a nuclear power plant um you know, all these kinds of things. And finally, you get the corporate accountability. The private sector will be responsible for safety standards while federal oversight is minimized. So all of this is basically coming down to reducing what the NRC can do to keep nuclear power plants from being built, 
getting more, getting you know, making sure that there's less federal oversight, less uh, need for compliance, and all that kind of stuff, and that the states will get more uh, power to basically deploy more nuclear reactors. This is scenario two. And then finally, scenario three, which I personally think is going to be the most likely scenario. This is going to be the market-driven approach to nuclear development. There's not going to be any new federal support. Uh, they're not going to do, you know, maybe they will keep the existing programs going. They're not going to shut those programs down. I don't believe that that's going to happen because that will blow up a lot of stuff that is currently happening, but they are not going to do any new things. They're not going to do any new subsidies, no grants. They they, they want they really want the private sector to take up this ball and run with it. There's going to be minimal regulatory involvement. The NRC maintains current processes, but avoids adding new requirements. And I even think that they might even break stuff down. Nuclear will have to compete again with renewables, uh, with solar and wind without any federal incentives. The same can be said for fossil fuels. This is what I think is going to be the worst thing. Gas is going to get a free pass. Gas is much faster, much cheaper than nuclear at this moment. So I think that nuclear will get crowded out by renewables and gas. The tax incentives, you know, Right now, there's there's all, all sorts of things that, that the United States is trying to do, like tax credits for nuclear power plants. They are going to be withdrawn, and, 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 and we will get a focus on le le legacy plants. Uh, so, some of these plants will get bailed out by their states, but federal policy is only going to you know ensure operational support for existing plants, if economically viable. This is hearkening back to the five gigawatts that were closed during the last time Trump was in power. We may also get a combination of, of all these three scenarios where, you know, uh, either the worst or the best things will be, will be realized. I think that scenario three is the most likely. I think that under scenario three, uh, nuclear won't flourish in the United States. I think that it will be, it, it, it will be held back. Uh, so, so personally, I, I, I'm not optimistic. I, I do know that that some of these people, including Trump, including JD, JD Vance, have said that they are pro-nuclear, that they want to support nuclear energy. Uh, but at the same time, what we see, that, you know, if they if they actually go ahead with 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 RFK Jr., for instance, he has been blatantly anti-nuclear in the past. He believes that those things cause cancer. So, so uh, I'm very uncertain about what is going to be going to happen in the future. Now, we have to finish. I mean, Harris, the Harris administration wouldn't have been a guarantee either. In the previous video that I did about about these two uh, potential administrations, I said, listen, the, the Biden Harris administration has been very good for nuclear, much better than the. Trump administration was before that, but that's still not a guarantee. And what we see is that electrical demand is sharply rising in certain states like Georgia, so we can expect a gas build out. That's that's what I expect. More gas, more more oil exploitation, more gas plants, uh, market driven approach to nuclear, which means that it is going to languish it uh, again. It's going to turn back into itself it's going to ask for money to develop stuff but it's never actually going to build reactors and with that you reach the end of this video think if you think that it was informative please uh, subscribe to the channel leave a like and if you want to contribute to this discussion please leave a comment down below i want to thank my patreon supporters and i want to thank Ken and Brian in particular, and I want to thank the Anthropocene Institute for sticking with me. Now, if you want to support the channel, you can go to the Patreon page and become a member. Now, that's all I had to say for today. Thank you all for watching, and may the strong force be with you. Bye-bye.